Welcome to my program, End of Life Journey with Hospice. Today, I would like to summarize my presentations for the end of life experience and achieving healthy spiritual closures of individuals with terminal diagnosis. Death and dying is a very difficult topic to talk about. We tend to avoid discussing death and dying, especially with our loved ones. Reality is that we all have to face it eventually one day, as it is destined for us. As much as we strive to live a healthy life, we should think of our end of life cycle, how we would want to be treated medically to ease the burden of decision-making on our lives by our family members as the day approaches when we are unable to make any sound decisions mentally or physically towards our health. How we would want to be taken care of. I would like to urge every individual to think about documenting their decision about their wishes and or discussing it with family members about their wishes for their end of life cycle. There are two ways to document these decisions. The living will, which is a written statement detailing a person's desires and or wishes regarding their medical treatment in circumstances in which they are no longer able to express informed consent, especially an advanced directive. The advanced directive is a statement of a person's wishes regarding medical treatment, which often include the living will. It's made to ensure those wishes are carried out when the patients or persons are unable to make any sound decisions mentally for themselves. Every individual needs these decisions made early during their life to ensure that their end-of-life medical treatments decisions are known as they would want it to be carried out for themselves. At that time, either to be carried out by their family members or by the medical team. These decisions will be respected as the individual's wish of how to be treated at the end of their life cycle. Some individuals may not even get the chance to make these decisions or the wills. In hospice diagnosis, we have predictable and unpredictable diagnoses. Predictable diagnoses are terminal diagnoses which include Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, multiple sclerosis, dementia, diabetes, heart failure, pulmonary such as COPD diseases, and stage kidney failure, sepsis, immune diseases, malignant cancers, treatable and untreatable with metastasis. Unpredictable diagnoses include trauma, strokes, seizures, comas, sepsis again, accidents, suicides, and any unexpected death. Predictable are hospice and palliative care, which is an option, and patient will need hospice care at end of life experiences. And if provided, they're able to achieve end of life, healthy spiritual closure of their life cycle. Unpredictable, death is usually very sudden and they are unable to get to the healthy spiritual closures in their life. In most cases, when the individual is uninformed and or unable to achieve a living will or advanced directive, they become the victims of the family members, personal beliefs, and or cultural religious rituals. Often the patient is kept lingering on 
only perhaps bodily existing, even though their mind is completely in a vegetated state. These include patients in coma and stage completely debilitated Alzheimer's dementia patients when the family members keep pursuing medical treatments even at the imminently dying stages of the patient, selfishly forcing them to live on and on. And it is very sad to acknowledge that in some cases, these family members keep the patients for their monetary gains, even though patients' body organs have completely failed and their bodies start necrotting. Please, please, please stop being selfish. You need to let go for the sake of your loved ones. I have seen the accusations stare in the eyes of these patients towards their family members, even just before they had become semi-comatose state, still trying to feed them with thickened fluids or water, and as a result have caused aspiration pneumonia to these patients, making them suffer even further complications. I had tried to educate the family members to recognize the safety needs and comfort of these patients, to respect their dignity, and to stop torturing them every moment of their end-of-life cycle. Most of all, when family members feeling guilty, they call 911, even if patients is DNR, to have them treated in the ICUs with intubations, keeping them alive with scientific life-sustaining support and further tortures, just so that they would be able to toss away their burden and feelings of guilt and sometimes make them die in the hospital's ICUs like a rag of vegetable. Without the comfort of their home environment and loving voices of their family members to ease their fears and reassuring them of their love as they are provided a healthy transition into their spiritual world. Reviewing my philosophy of the life cycle of an individual human being, as I had explained how we welcome an infant to this world from a spiritual world, loving, nurturing, feeding, guiding, educating, and protecting as they go through their life cycle, and as they approach to the end of their life cycle, they revert back to these infant child state of mind, seeking comfort, safety, love, and protection. And in their last months or weeks of their life cycle, going into their fetal position, becoming aphasic, their intake being mostly fluids, and now as they are prepared to go back to the spiritual world, they are visited by the spirits coming to pave the transition for the terminal individual human being. These visions that are very real to these individuals, but we refer to them as confusions, hallucinations seen by the individual. These spirits are visiting to again, make a safe and a welcoming transition for the terminal ill patients to go back to their spiritual world. Again, I would like to stress the importance of recognizing that each and every moment of a day we live, we should be thankful and strive to build experiences that create a healthy, spiritual closure with our family members each day of our lives, to be able to appreciate and recognize every individual in our lives for their values and purpose in our life. If we lived our lives 
as if every day of our life is our last day, respecting, loving, appreciating every family member and friends we are bestowed upon in this life, enjoying, sharing every moment with our family and friends, turning them into a cherishable and memorable moments to always remember and be remembered with our happy moments and good deeds and leaving these happy memories to be shared with and passed on to generations to come. Only then, with these monumental memories, we will be remembered forever. Again, we all have to be prepared for our end-of-life cycle and experiences and be able to achieve our healthy spiritual closure of our life. Living our lives every day to iron our differences and clear our conscience of our guilt feelings towards any one of our family member and friends is the ideal approach to a healthy spiritual closure we would want to achieve with the end of our life cycle. Please do not hesitate to call me at any time at 818-634-0656 for any questions or thoughts regarding these presentations. I will gladly respond with my answers to your questions during my next presentations with the live shows. Again, thank you kindly for listening to my presentations on this very sensitive and yet very important issue addressing of our experiences at our end of life cycle. Please stay healthy and safe until we meet again. God bless you all.